you doing, everybody? Fire away. What are some of the challenges that might present themselves if JT Gray isn't able to be out there for you on that special team unit this week? Yeah, I mean, listen, one of the things I've talked about is I think we've done a really nice job roster-wise this offseason, both through the draft and free agency, of, you know, kind of getting a lot of more, a lot more core players or guys that have the ability to play four core uh, throughout our roster. You know, look through our DB group, you look through our linebacker group in particular, there's a number of guys, you know, throughout this preseason, whether you notice or not, JT's not a guy that got a lot of reps uh, maybe in the preseason games. It was really testing more some of the, the younger guys and the free agents. So, uh, listen, what remains to be seen whether or not JT's going to be out there, but obviously he's a, he's a difference maker. So if he is, uh, that's great. Um, if he's not, you know, we'll just just like any other week, we'll have a we'll have a contingency plan. But you know, he certainly de- brings a different aspect to our to our special teams, both as a leader uh, and as a performer. And so, uh, you know, we'll we'll kind of see how that plays out. Darren, have you ever gone into a season with a rookie kicker and a rookie punter before? I have. I have at the Dolphins before. Um, comes to mind, we had one year where we had Andrew Franks was a Division three. Uh, rookie kicker and Matt Dar was a was a punter, so uh, hey, listen, it's it's a little hairy. Uh, there's no doubt about that. You know, listen, like any position, um, no matter what position you play, as a rookie, you're always going to have some growing pains. And so uh, I think sometimes with the kicker and punter, it's kind of a little bit more under the spotlight than other positions. You know, if you're a rookie left guard, uh, the general fan maybe not see your errors, so to speak. But uh, you know, if you're a if you're a rookie co- kicker or punter, it's kind of out there under the mi- microscope for everybody. Um, you know, we have a little bit of a unique deal. You know, Lou is a 30-year-old rookie, so he's got a little maturity about him. And then, and you know, and Blake, uh, you know, he's obviously got a, a really good, like I've talked about before, real good person- personality about him too. So, um, but listen, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be lying to you if I told you that there's yeah, that certainly hasn't crossed your mind on a daily basis. And but uh, I'm excited for both guys and and. Uh, Listen, there's nobody working harder than those two guys right now. So, but I, but I have been in that position before, and it's definitely interesting, to say the least. Do you make it a point to maybe talk to them a little bit more during the week than you might if you had veterans who kind of knew what they were getting into? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things you take for granted with a veteran specialist. Um, you know, Phil Galliano and myself kind of go through all the contingency plans every week uh, for everything that could potentially happen in the special teams game. You know, whether it's on field goal or, or, or punt, you know, with, with a new guy out there. And so when you have a veteran guy, uh, sometimes they, through repetition, you just get, you kind of get a, in a comfort zone where as a rookie, they may have something come up for the first time in a game. And so we're trying to make sure that we cover all those different scenarios and situations. That's c- kind of been the biggest thing for me this week is kind of just make sure we cover all of our bases for maybe a situation that a rookie hasn't been in before that you really can't create in a preseason game. You know, until you're under the fire in a regular season game. So, listen, both guys are extremely talented. I just, you know, the situational stuff seems to come up on special teams more than any other thing. So, uh, and it certainly comes up early in the season. You guys have all watched the college uh, football game the first weekend, and you look through those games. And I know I'm sitting at home, and as those things are going on, you're watching all those scenarios come up, and you start to think about it. Okay, this happens to us. You know, A, B, and C, and X, Y, and Z, and how we're going to handle it. So that's kind of been the the thing you can take for granted sometimes having a having a veteran guy in those in those spots. In a game like this where you have two really strong defenses, how much more magnified does flipping the field, controlling field position through the special team side become in a game like this? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, the DA, DA and I had that conversation, you know, uh, last week. You know, you look at uh, the way the teams are built, and uh, you know, I think it's oh it's always important naturally, right? But Particularly, you know, I mentioned the college games this past weekend, and I'm watching, and, and, and the field position becomes huge in all those games. You know, you watch that. I'm watching that Clemson Duke game, and, you know, Duke's turned the ball over back in their own end and, and things like that. So, how the field completely gets flipped, and uh, again, kind of going through all those scenarios. But listen, our, our, our coverage and, you know, our punt coverage, our kick coverage is going to be at a premium. You know, our return game, given our sub, given our offense, some good field position is going to be at a premium. And I kind of feel like, and I said this to the guys in, in, in a special teams meeting, early in the season in the NFL, you see a lot of big plays on special teams. And then it kind of levels off for a while, and you see it again at the end of the year because the rosters and injuries and everything. But you cannot simulate regular season special teams in, in the preseason. You just don't get those opportunities. And so 
things like field goal protection and punt protection and, and, and some of the guys that weren't out there on kick coverage and things like that. So this is going to be the first time we're doing things maybe at a live speed on, on some level. So all those things get magnified. And certainly anytime you can make a team go the long way on offense or you can create, you know, offensive position for your, for your own offense, that's a, a big, big part of the game. And so yeah, no, no question it, it gets magnified. Negotiation that kind of has to happen when it comes to a guy like Rashid Shaheed who's growing in his role in the offense but also is you know, a fantastic returner for you as well? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if negotiation is the right yeah, word, but right. listen, it, you know, I've said this before to you guys. Um, having as many guys in the building to be able to do as many jobs as possible is really important, especially for the special teams coach. So the more guys you can have in, in your stable that can be returners, so to speak, or gunners, so to speak, or whatever the position may be, you can go right on through. Uh, it gives you more options, and so I think we've done a good job there too. I think we have a number of guys that can be punt returners and a number of guys that can be kick returners. Rashid right in the mix. Obviously, we know, uh, you know, certainly what he brings to the table, and and uh, and so certainly. But uh, that's really a weekly kind of thing. It's a weekly discussion. We talk every week about our our game plan going in, and and hey, we're going to handle this this way, and kind of and talk about who those guys are going to be. And so, um, you know, that's that's kind of the contingency thing I talked about earlier. You always got to have that plan ready to go and, and having depth at those positions. Because I've been in on teams where you only have one guy or, you know, if this guy goes down, oh, boy. But I think we've done a good job here of, of kind of uh, creating some depth there at those spots. Yep. Did Bill Belichick leave anything out in his answer on the history of the loan snapping? So I have, I have to be honest with you. Um, I, I heard about it, but I did not <laughs> listen to the whole thing quite yet. But I have a, a, a tremendous amount of respect for Coach Belichick and his knowledge, not only the game, but of the special teams, you know, realm. He was a special teams coach in the past. Uh, they've always played super well on special teams, and I love. I'm, I'm going to listen to it. I just haven't had the opportunity yet. But uh, anytime he gets a chance to talk about special teams and snappers or holders or returners or kickers or punters, I know he takes the opportunity. So, so much respect there. But I'll get back to you after I listen to it. Make sure you have a lot of free time. When you're <laughs> <laughs> no question. No question. That's good stuff. But appreciate you guys. Thank you. Have a good one.